Wow, thank you so much for that fantastic introduction. I am so very excited to be here. My name is Brian Oscuri. I'm a two-time Olympic gold medalist and World Cup champion. And I can honestly tell you that in business and in sports, the higher up the ladder you go, the more people are gunning for you. I have some insights because of all the wonderful things I've been able to achieve in my life that I can bring here to you as business people to help you become incredible leaders in whether you're in business or you're in an organization and in your life and in your home and your communities. I can help you become a leader from the five lessons that I've learned. Lesson number one, have a vision. Most successful companies have vision statements and as an Olympic athlete and a younger girl, I knew that I had to have one as well. It's always important because that vision keeps you on track. It may seem far out there, it may seem it's like something you may not be able to achieve currently, but if you have that vision and it burns in your belly as something that you truly want to achieve with your corporation, with your team, with your organization, you will get there. This is the thing that draws you, draws you to success. So for me, my vision was at age seven when I told my first grade teacher, I said, I want to be an Olympian. That was the beginning of my vision. I drew this sign and it said, 1996 Atlanta Olympics, I have a dream. And to this very day, I can still remember the amazing feeling that I had when I was drawing that sign. The way that paper felt, just the way I felt when I looked at it, and I knew right then that I was going to achieve it. And women's soccer at that time wasn't even an Olympic sport. It wasn't about the soccer. It wasn't about the sport. It was about wanting to be an Olympian. That was my vision. And if you have a vision as powerful as mine was, I'm telling you right now, you'll get there. Having a vision keeps you on the path. And I'm not saying that you're not going to stray sometimes, because we all stray, don't we? We all know that we all stray at times. But having that vision in the back of your mind draws you back to it. And if you don't have one, there's nothing to be drawn back to. So you will often make choices that aren't conducive to what you want. So have that vision, have passion about it, be firm about it, feel good about it, have it in the back of your mind, and it'll guide you. So that's the biggest thing for you is to understand that not only do you have to have the vision, but now we're building on that by adding in the goals as the steps to get you to the vision. For me, one of my goals was to have maximum effort at a particular training camp. And my second goal was to try to improve every single day at that training camp. Now that's really, really hard because Every time you have a shot or an opportunity or a game is played, you don't always necessarily have control over how it's going to end up. So I'm not thinking so much about the result of the goal as I am about my effort and what I can control. And so in business, you'll have the same thing. You may be in a company that you don't think is doing the right stuff. You may be with a group or your boss or your coworkers, and you may not like it and it may not be going well for you. But guess what? You control you. And that's where the power is. That is truly where the power is. And if you harness that and you understand that and you realize that, you can get there, wherever you're there may be. In 1999 World Cup, we were playing Germany in the quarterfinal game at RFK in front of 65,000 people and the president. We're hanging on a bit, a bit by a thread, and Germany gets a little bit of a, a counterattack against us, and Brandy Chastain has the ball. She was my left back. Brandy Chastain has the ball, and she passed the ball back to me. Right into the goal. I didn't say a word to Brandy. Brandy didn't say a word to me. Between the time that the ball went in the goal and the whistle blew, we got right back to business. Our team was trained and we knew that when a mistake like that occurs, you just leave it alone and you can deal with it later. And every single one of us acted like leaders that day in how we conducted ourselves. We we're like, you know what, that happened, there's nothing we can do about it, let's get on with it. So we did. Sure enough, that second half tied, and we were down two to one, guess who scored? 
off a corner kick. Brandy Chastain goes up in the air majestically and somehow gets her head on that ball and scores that game tying goal. And the place absolutely erupted. Like I said, had I lost my mind, had Brandy lost her mind and got out of our game face and didn't do what we were supposed to do, if we didn't lead by example of what we had learned, I guarantee she would not have been able to score that goal because she would have been feeling bad about it. She would have been down about it. We all would have been inner fighting with the sisterhood of the team that we had. We would have been going at each other. And that's not how champions are made. And that's not how leaders conduct themselves. And that is not how we got to our vision, which was to win that World Cup championship. We had a new coach, new goalkeeper coach, new head coach. I came into training camp, 25 pounds overweight. Sprained my ankle, had a stress fracture, pulled my quad, all these bad things started happening. And I was like, what's going on? Why, why are these things happening? And then my coach said, you know what, Bri? She said, you have let everybody down. The next Olympic Games, which was the very next year, 2000, go back and look it up. I did not pay a single minute of that Olympic Games. I was angry. <laughs> I was so angry at the coach. I can't believe that she would bench me. I can't believe that she wouldn't give me a chance. I couldn't believe that she wouldn't just overlook the fact that I gained 25 pounds and couldn't move and my shorts were too tight and all these things and I couldn't get to balls that I could before and, and all these different things and I couldn't run the fitness right. I couldn't believe it. How dare she not give me an opportunity to redeem myself? Well, guess what? That wasn't her responsibility to give me that opportunity. It was mine. I did that. And that's when I knew I had failed. I'm the one that did this. I was bloated. I, I could barely fit in my shorts at the time. I, sh I was embarrassed. And I should have been embarrassed, but I wasn't before, but I was then. And guess what? So what did I do? I embraced my failure. I said, Bri, you messed it up. Okay? You messed it up. You did all these things wrong. Now what? Now here you are in the gutter and you're not playing and you haven't played and the team's mad at you and your coach is mad at you. How do you fix it? You embrace the failure and the truth of what happened. That was my fault. And it's okay. Because if I believe that, know that, use that, then I have the power to change it. And that is exactly what I did. I got online, I read all these books about nutrition, working out, you know, gain, losing weight, gaining muscle, quickness, speed, agility. I basically got a gym membership. I went to the gym six days a week. I worked hard. I practically, I thrashed myself. Beast mode is what I called it. I went into beast mode in the gym. I ate right. Everything I did, I went back to the vision that I had and recalibrated myself by embracing the failure. I went into training camp and I was better than I had ever been. And that was 2001. I went to training camp. And in 2003, I started every minute of the Women's World Cup for 2003. And in 2004, in the Athens Games, we won Olympic gold. And I played every single minute of every single game. Where? did that begin when I embraced failure. So I was invited into the national team a week after that. Went into the team, went into training camp, number five on the, on the depth chart of keepers, five of five, had a crazy training camp, crazy week. Thousand goals given up. Given up goals on my left, on my right, behind me, over me, I mean, Michelle Akers was there, Mia Hamm was there, Brandy Chastain was there. I mean, all these legends of soccer were scoring on me left and right everywhere. And I thought to myself, gosh, 
I'm really digging the ball at the back of the net a lot. I don't know if, I don't know if this is for me. I, I'm just trying to get my hands on something. I'm just trying to make as many saves as I can. They may not look right. I don't know. I'm just trying to do my best. And I went in there just like the same mentality I had before every single training camp. Let me, let me go in this every session and give my best and give my best. And even if it's not that great, do what I need to do. Control what I can control. Sure enough, at the end of that training camp, had my, my exit meeting with Anton. And he goes, uh, yeah, he goes, uh, I think we're going to invite you in next time. I was like, we're going to invite you back. I'm like, oh, okay, cool, sweet. <laughs> Guess what? Kept inviting me back over and over and over and over. One camp turned into three, three months turned into a year, a year, two years, three years, four years, five years. Kept inviting me back. Why? Sometimes I don't really know why, but I will say this. I never took it too seriously, and I was never too hard on myself. Because let me tell you something. You don't always know who's watching, and you don't always necessarily know what a person is looking for. You may think as, a, as you know, somebody, as an executive, that they're looking at your work, but they may actually be looking at your effort and your integrity and if you're at work on time or things like this, well, in sports, it's the same way. They may not be looking at whether or not you saved every ball that training camp or that day, but they're looking at how do you respond when a goal goes by you? Are you too hard on yourself and you, you, you crumble up into a ball and then all of a sudden you're useless for the next five minutes? Or are you able to not be so hard on yourself, embrace failure, like I said earlier, shake it off, and keep moving forward.